the ability to change the web page background color, smoother orientation changes on responsive design, more reliable JavaScript loading, and font embedding. That's what's new in CP Extra 1.5.2. Like I said, today I'm excited to tell you about four new features inside of CP Extra. Did you know that many of the features inside of CP Extra have been added on request? We've had people privately approach us saying that they are willing to fund new features inside of CP Extra. Well, we've been offering this service privately for a while now, but now we want to offer it publicly. We're now offering a custom JavaScript programming service on our website. If you have any need for some custom code inside of your Adobe Captivate course, we're here willing to help. We will either deliver the code as your own personal JavaScript file, or we will implement it into CP Extra, and it will be included as a new feature for the benefit of the whole Adobe Captivate community. But what if you are more interested in writing your own JavaScript code? Well, we're here to help with that as well. We have just released a new five-hour video training course on JavaScript basics on infosemantics.com. Now, this is not strictly a course about writing JavaScript for Adobe Captivate, although we do give you some pointers along that way within the course. However, we see this more as a preparation for a future course about JavaScript inside of Adobe Captivate. And if you want to learn more about that course, you can watch the introduction video on our website on this page right here, the JavaScript Basics course. Now, one last thing I'd like to tell you before we begin is that we are increasing the price of CP Extra. When we released CP Extra in 2016, we said that we would gradually increase the price as we increased the feature set. Well, it's been five years. CP Extra has a lot more features than when it was released. And in the last year, we've added some pretty big name features to it, but the price has not yet changed. And many in our community have even said that CP Extra, for what it is, is seriously underpriced. So we are increasing the price from $67 to $84. That's an increase of 25%. Now, if you haven't got CP Extra yet, well, you can still buy it at its original price. For the next month in the checkout in InfoSemantics, if you use the promo code CP Extra Forever, then we will take 25% off the price of any CP Extra product. That means if you buy some multi-user licenses, you might even get them for cheaper than it was ever possible to get them. So try that. Use the promo code CP Extra Forever in the checkout for infosemantics.com to be able to get CP Extra at its original price, but that's only for one month. Okay, let's start with the first new feature to CP Extra 1.5.2, and that is Xpref Document Background Color. It's no secret that Captivate is a little strange in the features that it does give you and in the features that it doesn't give you. Let's have a look at an example here. Here I have a project with a couple of slides in it. Now I've got a definite color theme to these slides. I've picked my colors very carefully, and they've come from an online palette that I've got here from flatuicolors.com, which gives me some very nice colors for some flat design. What I want is I don't want a white background to this slide. I'd rather it to be a very light gray. I think that's going to look a little bit more appealing for me. So I want to choose this color here, this anti-flash white. Well, I'm just going to copy the hexadecimal value of that color here. And then I'm going to go back to Captivate, and I want to change the background of this slide. So to do that, with nothing selected inside of the Properties panel, I can change the background of the slide from the Master Slide background to a custom background, and then I can pick a different color for the background here. Um, fortunately, that's just appearing outside of the capture range, but I, what I'm doing here is pasting the color of the gray into the project, and you can see the background changed. However, Notice what happens if I go and preview the course. And I'm going to do this by doing the live preview on devices here. And click through here. Okay, we get to our slide. 
Notice that the background of the slide has changed color, but look at everything that's surrounding it. You've got this big white page, and Captivate does not give you any features for changing the color of this page. And it might be that a pure white background might clash quite a bit with your color design for your course. So we have added the xpref document background color preference variable to help with this. Xpref document background color takes a single parameter, and that is a hexadecimal color value. So I have a text entry field set up here, where I can put in some text. And when I click the submit button, it's going to update the value of xpref document background color with whatever I write in here. So when I click submit, you can see that this now updates the background color of the document, not just the slide. And I can set this to any color. So what if I change it to a red? Yes, I can change that there. It looks terrible, but you know, I can change it. So this allows us to open up some new design possibilities inside of Captivate. Now, if you just wanted to set it to a single color for the entire course, well, that's easy enough. We just go back to Captivate, we go to our project variables, and then we find our xpref document background color variable, and we change the value there to be our desired background color. And then we can go preview the course again. And then we will see right from the beginning, the background color will be our custom color. The next feature is XPREF orientation change transition. And this is a feature for all those responsive course designers out there. Now, especially when you're working with breakpoint view, the transitions between different orientations of your course can be quite jarring. As you can see, as we transition here, it takes a little bit for Captivate to get its brains together and get everything organized for the new screen size. Well, to make this a little bit less jarring, we've created XPREF orientation change transition. And it's probably easier to show you what it does than to explain what it does. So let's go and create the variable. We're going to go to project, variables, create a new variable, and we'll call it XPREF orientation change transition. And even if we just define it with no value, it's going to change the behavior of the Captivate course. So let's save this. And I'm going to go to Live Preview on Devices. And that should hopefully automatically update, yep, what we see on our screen here. So let's see what happens when I now flip the screen. Notice how there is a fade that happens when you change the orientation. That's generated by CP Extra, which is quite nice. And so it means that while Captivate is making those changes in the background to organize the stage, you don't have to see that. You're getting a white screen and you don't see anything else. But what if we don't want a white screen? For example, you can see due to our XPREF document background color here, we've got a gray background while the transition is white. What if we wanted the transition to be that same gray color? Or what if we wanted the transition to be a bit faster or a bit slower? Well, we can configure that using the two parameters that XPREF orientation change transition gives you. So let's go back over to Captivate. We'll go to our variables and we will find our uh, XPREF orientation trans trans <laughs> XPREF orientation change transition variable. Okay, so the first parameter you can configure is how long the transition goes for. And this is a number of seconds. So by default, this is going to be 0.5, it'll be half a second, but let's say two, it's going to be a transition lasting two seconds. And by putting in a comma, we can then configure the second parameter. And this is the color, what the color of that transition is going to be. So it could be the same color that we've generated for our background here. But just to make it very obvious what it is, I'm going to make it a bright red color. So let's see what that does by going to preview, live preview on devices. We can see that it's now refreshed on my uh, phone here. And now when I transition 
from one orientation to the other, you can see that we get that big red shape. But it's only covering the slide, it doesn't cover the document uh, around it, so that color is controlled by XPREF document background color, not by the orientation change variable there. Okay, let's look at what's next. As the name suggests, XCMND Embed Font from Action allows you to embed a font into Adobe Captivate. And this is a long-standing feature request for CP Extra. So before we explain how this feature works, let's explain why you need it. In my course design here, I have several different custom fonts that I'm using. For example, the title here is using this Barnscrift font. This button here is using Courier Prime, and the other button is using Neutra Text. Now, in a usual course design, I wouldn't mix and match all these different custom fonts, but I have a couple of different custom fonts here just for the purpose of demonstration. Now, while this all renders correctly on my computer, if I show you a screenshot of what this looks like on my tablet, you can see that none of those fonts are actually rendering correctly. It's defaulting to a WebSafe font, a font that is available on all devices. So if you want to include custom fonts in your course, you also need to include those font files. So the first step is to locate these several different fonts that we want. And that's not too difficult to do, at least on Windows. I'll show you the process for Windows because I don't have a Mac, and to be honest, I don't know what the process is for a Mac, but I assume that you Mac users know what you're doing. Yeah, so what we need to do is, here's my folder where I've got my uh, Captivate project, and I'm going to go to my C drive into the Windows file, and then I am going to look for the fonts folder. And all of my installed fonts will appear inside of this folder. So let's find the first one, which was this Banschgriff. Yeah, I'm sorry for what I assume is German users out there if I'm, I, well, I am mispronouncing it. There's no two ways around it. Okay, so I'm going to copy these files into here. Okay, now the next font we need to locate is our Courier New font, so maybe we can just search for that. Courier. Okay, we've got Courier Prime, sorry. Okay, I'm going to copy that across. And when I copy that across, you'll notice that there's more than one font file for the Courier font. Sometimes the fonts are divided up into an italic font, a bold font, or a bold italic font, etc. So we're going to discuss which one of these we need to include in just a second. And then the last one we want to include is the Neutra Text. Okay, here's my Neutra Text bold font, and I will paste that in. So that's step one down. Locate your font files and put them in the same folder as your Captivate project file. The next step is that you need to identify the different types of font files. So here the Barnschgif is a .ttf file, and Courier Prime is a .ttf file. However, I have this file here, the Neutra Text Bold, which is an .otf file. Now, your computer understands how to interpret an OTF file, but as it stands at the moment as I'm recording this, not many browsers understand how to process an OTF file. And that stands for a lot of things. You see, there's actually a lot of different font files out there, but not all of them work in the browser. So it's possible that before embedding a font into your project, you first need to convert one type of font file into a different kind of font file. Now that can be done on the web. For example, there's a number of services that allow you to do this. Transfonter is one of them, and I'm going to demonstrate how to use that here. First, what we'll do is click this Add Fonts button here. Then we will navigate to our font file and select it, and open it, okay? And then down here, we can 
select what kind of font file we want to get back. These WOFF and WOFF2 are acceptable as well, but I would like to keep it a TTF file. And you don't really have to configure any of these other ones unless you want to. Configuring the different characters that you want might actually allow you to decrease the size of the font file, which might allow it to load quicker in your course if loading time is starting to become a problem for you. But anyway, with that selected, I'm going to convert the font and then it's going to allow me to download it. Okay, so it's going to come out as a zip. I am going to go find that zip file. And then I am going to take that to my other file here and just extract it. Now, of course, like when you download anything off the internet, it's probably best to scan it first. I didn't create this tool, I'm not endorsing this tool, it's never been a problem for me, but it's just, these are the days we live in, it's always best to scan anything that you download. So now that we have valid font files, we can move on to step three, which is we need to make Captivate include those font files in its export. Here's how we do that. Inside of my project, I'm going to go to my last slide here, and this is a personal resources slide. I'm not expecting the learner to ever see this slide, but if I can include some buttons in here, then I can make sure certain resources are loaded into my project. I've set up a couple of buttons down here for each of the font files that I want to include. So for Barnes Script down here, what I'll do is I'll select that button, I'll go to Actions, and then I'm going to pick the open URL or file action. From there, I'm going to browse to the location of my font files. So here's my Barnes script font, and I'm going to open that. So now when I publish my course, this is going to be included in the Captivate export files, which is very nice. Now, a slight note here for people who are collaborating with other Captivate developers, when you share this project file to somewhere else, it's going to keep this exact file path here. So when Captivate publishes on their machine, it's going to look at this file path and try to find this file, which may or may not exist. So if you're working with other Captivate developers, I suggest you have a folder on your C drive where you keep all of these assets. But just for the sake of demonstration, I'm just pulling these off of my desktop. So let me at the same time go here and configure the button to be able to include the nutratext.ttf file in the export. Now it comes to Curia Prime as the next font. And remember, there were several font files for the Curia Prime font. Which one should I include? Well, if I go over and see where my Curia Prime font is being used, which is here, you can see over in my character set, I've chosen from the drop down here the bold character set. And this drop down equates to those different font files that we saw. And I've selected the bold one. So if I want this to look exactly the same on my iPad or other people's computers, then when I select the Curia Prime font by going to open URL or file, then I should select the Curia Prime bold.ttf and open that there. Okay, so that's step three done, but notice each of these buttons has a very particular name to it. I've called this one Barnscrift Loader, this one is Nutratext Loader, and this one is Courier Prime Bold Loader. These buttons are going to be CP Extra's gateway to locating these font files. And let's see how it does that with step four. Step four is where we start using XCMND embed font from action. And I've already defined that variable in my project variables dialog here. I've set up this text field so that when I type out some value into here and click submit, it's going to send that value to XCMND embed font from action. So by playing around with this, we'll see how we can work with XCMND embed font from action. 
So of course, on my computer, I already have these fonts loaded and working. So if I really want to see whether it works, I need to swap to a different device. So I'm going to publish this project and then we'll pick up on my iPad and see what happens. So we're picking up on my iPad here to play around with XCMND embed font from Action. Now this command variable takes three parameters. The first one is the name of the font. Now you can find the name of the font by going back to Captivate, selecting the shape or the caption, what have you, that has the custom font in it, and then going down into the style settings, looking under character, and seeing in that drop down menu what the exact name of the font is there. So I'm going to type that out first of all for our barn script font, excellent. And that's our first parameter. So I'll put in our comma. And now let's type in the second parameter. The second parameter is which button or interactive object is loading that font into Captivate, which one has that open URL or file action. So I have down here a little box where I've written out the name of those buttons already. So I know that the barn script loader button is the one that loads the font. Now the third parameter is optional. It allows us to state whether it's the success action or the failure action, which is loading that font. But if I leave that parameter undefined, it's going to assume it's the success action, which it is in this particular case. So with that done, I'm going to assign this value to XCMND embed font from action by tapping this submit button. Notice how the font immediately changed to be our custom font. We have successfully embedded that font into Captivate. So let's move on and embed our other fonts here. So the next font is this Neutra text font. So we'll find the name of it inside of Captivate. Here it is, Neutra text. So I am going to change my values here. I need to type out Neutra text. And then the button that's loading that is called Neutra Text Loader. And then I'll click Submit. Watch the Continue button. Notice how nothing happened there. Why is that? Well, the problem is that the name of this font has a space in it. And when you assign things to CP Extra, by default, it takes out all white space character. That's tabs or spaces. But in this case, we want to keep it. Otherwise, you know, this is incorrect. So the way to keep it in this case is we need to surround this neutral text string with these brackets here. Brackets are a way inside of CP Extra of saying that this is a string, keep all of the spaces inside of it. So when I click Submit Now, you notice now our text loads. So the last font is this Courier Prime font. And notice that for this one, we picked a certain flavor of the font, which was the bold flavor. So let's see what happens if I try to just load this using the Courier Prime font name and remembering to keep the correct capitalization. Okay, that's been loaded by our Courier Prime Bold loader. Now let's click Submit and watch what happens to the Submit button. Okay, see it loaded there just fine. Now, if you were using different Courier Prime fonts for this, then you might want to change it up. You might need to type in bold or italic uh, inside there in order to differentiate the different font files. But generally, if you're just using one, yeah, you only need to put in the name of the font there and you don't need to worry about the different subset of the font that you used. So that's how we can embed fonts into Captivate. Now we are making these assignments here live inside the Captivate course, but it's likely that you want to embed these fonts right from the beginning of the course, not just when you enter a slide where you use them. Well, to do that, what I recommend you do is set up your Xpref init action, advanced action to embed the fonts there using XCMND embed font from action. And then they should be available throughout the course right from the beginning. 
Now the last feature that we're going to talk about today is XPREF init load.js from action. Now if you've been following us recently, you probably realize that this variable name is very similar to a command variable that we just introduced recently, which is xcmindy load.js from action. Now we've been very excited about this command variable because it makes it much easier to load custom JavaScript code into Adobe Captivate. However, as we have continued to use it, we've noticed that there is a slight problem with it. And I'm going to demonstrate that problem to you right now. Now in my project files here, I've already included this javascript.js file here. And you can see the code for it here. As soon as the JavaScript file runs, it's going to send up an alert telling us that JavaScript.js has run. But it's also defining a function here in the global scope, which is called init JavaScript.js code. And when we run that function, perhaps from within Captivate, it's going to send up another alert box telling us that this function has run. Okay, so let's go into Captivate and load this JavaScript file in. The first step for that is very similar to our font embedding process. We needed to create a button, and then for that button, we set up its success action to open a URL or file. And in this case, it's loading the JavaScript.js file. Now I want this file to run right from the beginning of the movie so that its features are available on all slides of the Captivate project. So to do that, similar to what I stated about the previous feature, we need to set up our init action, an action which is going to run right at the beginning of the Captivate project, no matter what the first slide ends up being because of LMS or self-paced learning, etc. So to do that, what you need to do is go to project, variables and you need to create your xpref init action. You give it the value which is a name of a button somewhere inside of your course, which is this button right here. See, it's named init action up here. And what this means is that what we do here is going to happen right at the beginning of the course. And in this case, what I want to do is load the JavaScript using the XCMN, <laughs> using the XCMND load JS from action variable. So for that, it's going to point to the JS loader button. And with that done, when I now go and preview my course, and then click play, you can see that we get the alert message telling us that the JavaScript file has run. Okay, but there is a little bit of a problem with this. What if I want to run this init JavaScript JS code one here? Okay, let's copy the name of that function and just for a moment comment out this alert run JavaScript file thing here. What I'm going to do is go to my start action here, and I'm going to uh, execute JavaScript. So this is the first slide of the course. I'm going to go to the script window, and I'm going to run that custom function, which is defined in the JavaScript.js file, and click OK. Now let's go preview our project, live preview on devices, and then click through here. Now what do you expect to happen when I click this play button? Well, looking at the code inside of that JavaScript file, because the extra function was running, I would expect to see an alert box appear. But when I click play, I don't see anything. Now, why is that? Well, although we are loading and then running this JavaScript file right from when the movie begins, which is as soon as we click the play button, that doesn't actually happen fast enough for that code to be run before the enter slide action here is run. And that is a bit of a problem because, like I said, you, due to LMSs or self-paced learning, you never know what slide the learner is going to start on, which means the first slide might be broken when they come back and view a course for a second time. So what is the solution to this? What I'm going to do is go back to my JavaScript file and then I'm going to open it and then uncomment this alert here so that we can see when the JavaScript file is run, and then we can see when this function is run. Okay, we have added a new preference variable to uh, CP Extra, which is this xpref 
init load js from action. This is like a one-shot call to xcmnd load js from action, which happens as soon as the web page loads. Not when you click that play button earlier than that, as soon as the web page loads. So let's see what happens when we point this to JS loader here. Update that. And let's get rid of our init action here. Let's change it back to a continue. So the only way that this JavaScript file is being loaded is through that xpref init load JS from action preference variable. Let's go preview live on devices again. Okay, click through. Notice immediately we get that first run JavaScript file alert. That comes even before we have clicked this play button. So the JavaScript is loaded much earlier, which means when we now click play, we will get the run init JavaScript JS code because this function was created in time for the first enter slide action. So that should help your code to run a lot more reliably. But there is a little bit of responsibility in here. It's possible now that this JavaScript file is run when not all features of Captivate are fully loaded yet. So you need to be careful about what kind of code you run in here, because if you're accessing things like variables or events, etc., Captivate might not quite be ready to set that up. So you might want to trigger an init function from your init action, advanced action, etc., to get things running on time, etc. But that gets around that particular issue and makes working with JavaScript inside of Captivate a lot easier. So there you go. That's four new features inside of CP Extra, which allow you to do powerful things such as font embedding or changing the color of the background here. All things we couldn't do before, but thanks to CP Extra, we can do now. And don't remember, if you want to get CP Extra at its original price for the next month, use the promo code CP Extra forever and you can get it right now. And as always, we keep on adding new features into CP Extra. Contact us if you have something that you particularly need us to add and are willing to fund. Okay, thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.